Hello dear viewers, welcome back again. Today in this session, we will try to find out the answer of this question. Why do covalently bonded compounds have low melting and boiling point? So to answer this question, first we need to understand what is melting and boiling. So actually, melting and boiling are the two processes in which molecule transform from its one state to another state. So this concept can be understood by taking an example of a covalent compound. Here I have taken a water molecule which is present in its solid state form that is ice form and this water molecule in this ice are closely packed via this free linkage hydrogen bond electrostatic interaction or electrophobic interaction. So all these three interactions may be present in a covalently bonded compound. In the case of ice, hydrogen bond is present in between this water molecule. So this hydrogen bond is quite weak. So this bond can be broken down easily by supplying a small amount of energy. That's why this solid ice, when we heat this solid ice above 0 degree Celsius, then the all hydrogen bond present between this water molecule, that means intermolecular hydrogen bonds get broken down and all the water molecule separated apart from each other. So the solid water molecule transform into liquid water molecule or here you can see the water molecule remains intact as such. There is no harm to the water molecule. Still water molecules have two covalent bond between hydrogen and oxygen. Only the bond which is present between this water molecule gets broken down or this is actually happened during transformation of a substance from one state to another state and now you can see here if I boil this water molecule or if I heat this water molecule again then the liquid water molecule gets converted into its gaseous or vapor form so this phenomena takes place at 100 degree celsius so at 100 degree celsius again the uh, weak interaction between this water molecule again gets broken down and water molecule again separated from each other at a quite measurable distance. So still in this water molecule remain as such. There is no harm to the water molecule. So we can see here from ice to this vapor phase only the intermolecular interaction between this water molecule get distorted and this intermolecular uh, interaction is quite weak. It may be hydrogen bond electrostatic interaction or electrophobic interaction. So due to this weak intermolecular interaction which is present in covalent compound because of this this covalently bonded compounds have low melting and boiling point but if we take an example of an ionic compound for example NaCl so if you try to transform this NaCl which is ionic solid into its liquid state then this NaCl require 801 degree celsius uh, to melt that's why the melting point of sodium chloride is 801 degree celsius and again, if you want to uh, convert this melted sodium chloride into its gaseous form, then again, the boiling point of this uh, molten sodium chloride will become 1413 degree Celsius. So you can see in the case of water, this melting point is 0 degree Celsius, but in the case of ionic solid, it is 801 degree Celsius. In the case of water, the boiling point is 100 de degree Celsius, but in the case of ionic solid, it is 1413 degrees Celsius. So you can clearly see here, there is a huge difference in between your melting point and boiling point between covalently bonded compound and ionic solid. So why NaCl have this much high melting point and boiling point? It is due to the intermolecular interaction which is present in ionic solid. And in the case of NaCl, it is ionic bond. And ionic bond is a strong bond so it requires huge amount of energy to break down this ionic interaction that's why uh, the ionic solid have high melting point and boiling point i hope you understand the concept thank you